Hello and welcome to chapter 13, lucky 13, accessing Linux file systems and roll the intro. That's enough. Okay. So let's then jump like we usually do. Let me just clear a couple of things directly into our console. Okay. So the, the thing is, or the theme is access Linux file systems. So. In this chapter, we're going just to see if you, w when we reach the RH134 chapters, we will also do, okay? So this is just a, a matter of seeing our file systems. By seeing, I mean, how many hard drives you have, well, how many SSDs we have, do we have any NVMEs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and it identify them and access them. As a bonus, I'm also going to show you uh, how to access a USB thumb drive, just as a teaser for what's for things to come. And we're going to um, wrap things up uh, with uh, how can you use the find command and the locate command okay, to find files. I think we have covered this before, but we just covered it again just to make sure. So if you want to identify your storage devices, you have many options. We're going to explore the the text file called cat proc partitions partitions then we're going to explore the lsblk blk id and the du command um but yeah the yeah the u it's fine okay so let's start by by this one and i'm 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 going to check the contents of a text file so and this you have what you have currently out in our machine. So here in the server, you have an NVMe drive, and this NVMe drive has this amount of space available. So what I'm going to say, what I'm going to say to you guys right now, it's not scientifically very correct. And if you are very picky and anal about this stuff, you will just disagree with me, and 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 that's fine. I, I'm okay with that, um, but here you, you have here a, a way to find the find the, the size. So here here I have the blocks information. Okay, this is means that this is around twenty gigabytes of almost twenty one gigabytes of space. So one two three, okay, one two three. This means twenty gigabytes of space is what you have here available on this storage device. In this case, in the eight uh, NVMe SSD, and you have P1, you have P2. This is partition one. This is partition two. I am not going to discuss partitions at this point. It's going to be discussed on the RH134 video series. Like and subscribe to get notified. This means ASR0. It's our um, optical device, DVD, CD. Again, this is a virtual machine, so it's virtualizing some sort of uh, optical drive. And DM0 and DM1. It's the uh, it's regarding L LVMs. We will discuss LVMs on our H one through four video series. I can subscribe to get notified about that too. So we have one the storage device, one main storage device. It's an NVMe device. It has twenty gig. It has twenty gigabytes of space with two, parti two partitions. One partition it's one two three. It's about one gigabyte big, and this one it's a reminder of the space, and that's fine. Cool. Let's do the LSBLK. BLK, why? Because these storage devices in Linux are called, are called block devices. Block devices are storage devices. And, le and LS, it's, well, it's to list. I think you guys can uh, relate to that. So uh, like, like I said here, this is our, mo it's, it's our, it's our optical drive. And there we go. This is our optical drive. Okay. This is our first hard drive, and I said it had around about 20 gigabytes, and I was not far off. I said this one was one gigabyte, and I was correct, and this one 19 gigabytes, and I was correct. So you can you can see on this command the, the information, or you can see on this one. Just pick, take your pick, and you can actually uh, use one or the other. This is my boot partition. This is a partition, and this is our root drive. This is our swap partition. I'm going to 
talk about these special ones uh, that are in LVMs on our H134. So like and subscribe to get notified and learn all about that. Cool. Now, build KID. Well, you get the idea. It's a little bit more of the same, right? So here you can see the EUIDs of each partition. So like we discussed on the network, um, many devices have uh, EU universal IDs that identify the device. Network cards were, network connections were, was one of them. And these are partitions and then disk drives, okay? You can also see that on the LSBLK, you can do minus FS and you can, you, and you can get all the juicy details with LSBLK. You can use other LSBLK, BLK ID, uh, CAT proc partitions, um, whatever the case may be. You are okay with that, that, that and, and, and that's fine. There are, there is no one that is better than the other. There is no best command to do, to, to use. Just use the one that you are more comfortable with. It's all fine and cool. Now, let's access a, a, a thumb drive. So if I, uh, a thumb drive or any other drive, thumb drive, external OSB, external hard drive, whatever the case. Here, let's, let's look at the before. This is what you have before, okay? Now I'm going to insert, give me a second. I need to access my console. I'm going to insert my thumb drive. And if I go here, you see I have something new here. This is my thumb drive. So thumb, something changed. So before I don't have, I didn't have the thumb drive. Now I have the thumb drive. Let me also let me disconnect it again. It's a quick second. Now if I disconnect it, it's gone. Okay. And a new way to another way to get this under control is to a command we call DMASG. This co this command will allow us to see um, kernel messages. Not all, but some. And the ones you can see here, it's go are going to show um, USB devices getting connected. So let me connect it again one more time for the last time and keep it connected. Connect. If I go here, as you can see, a USB device was connected and was addressed. Cool. Now, if I go to my proc partitions, it's there. LSB, okay. It's also there. And as you can see, it was already it was automatically mounted. Okay, what is the what is a mount? A mount is when I make a relationship between the folder and the, the storage device. In this case, since on my on, on this machine I already have the graphical interface installed, I have GNOME installed and all of that good stuff installed. It will detect the drive and auto mount it like in a Windows machine. So it, it means that I can see the contents just by listing the contents of the folder. So this is the mount. It's the relationship between the device and a folder. This is because this machine here has already installed GNOME and all the graphical interface stuff. Since it's the case, GNOME is auto-mounting. My graphical interface is auto-mounting the device. But if you remember, this guy here does not have anything installed regarding graphical interfaces. This guy here, it's not, does not have. Which means, let's, let's be okay. I'm going to disconnect the USB thumb drive from the first machine. And I'm going to connect to this second machine. Okay. So if I go here, it's uh, it's disconnected, and if I run the command here, it shows as connected. See? Let me clear this one. Now the thumb drive is connected to the second one, but if I go here, it's not auto mounted. So if you remember correctly, here on the first one, he would just auto mount. Oh my God, where is it? Did I did I lose that information? I probably did. Hopefully not. There it is. I didn't. So he auto mounted the my thumb drive to this folder, run media. That's actually X Windows doing that for me or GNOME. Here, that did not happen. 
the device is there, but is not auto-mounted because the second machine does not have the graphical interface installed. So in order to do this manually, first you need to be root, then you create a folder, any, anywhere it will be okay. I like to use the MNT folder because the MNT folder already exists and it's just MNT corresponds to mount. So just, as, just let's just make use of it. Then I can do just mount. I will d d specify the device. If you don't remember, just go back, back here and it will tell you. And it's called SDA1. Then I will tell them to mount on the currently created folder. Now it means that uh, my physical device SDA1, which is our, it's my thumb drive. It's there, okay? It's mounted to this folder here, which means if I list this folder, I see the contents. If I go to the LSBLK, I see it mounted. Okay? So it's as simple as doing mount as root. You need to be root to do that. As root, you mount the device to the folder. Any folder will suffice, and there it is. Now, the question is, will this survive the reboot? No. I will not do this. This I will not make this permanently. I will not make this survive reboots because I'm going to discuss this on the RH134. Like and subscribe to get notified about that. But you can make this happen automatically on each reboot. In this case, it will not occur. But if you want it, you could. Okay? So at this point, you know how I identify your storage devices, proc partitions, LSBLK, BLK ID. And you can also do the, the disk usage. Okay? Or disk free. This tree also allows us to see your devices and where they are mounted and their spaces. I do like the LSB OK. I prefer this one, but this one is also good enough. People like some people prefer it. It's fine. Now you can actually see the mounted here. Okay. And I like to put the minus H because it shows us as human readable, which will give us uh gigabytes that and megabytes instead of weird lock units. Okay. So if I reboot the server, I will not because that's unneeded. But if, if I was to reboot the server, this mount will disappear. This is not prevail. This mount will not prevail. Okay? If you want this mount to prevail or persist, you need to edit, edit a file. Okay? And that file is it's going to be read on the boot process and it's going to apply all the changes that uh, that file identifies and lists that could include the mount of this pen drive. Okay. To wrap things up of, about chapter 13, let's discuss about the locate command and the find command. Locate and find allows us to pardon the, the redundancy. The locate and the find allows us to find files and folders on our, on our, on our, on our devices. If I do locate, for example, the FS tab file. Okay, my Rocky 2 does not have locate installed, just to, just to save some time. Let's go to Rocky 1. And the locate file, the locate utility, it's, it's a very simple utility. It does not offer anything fancy. It will just locate a file based on our pattern. That's it. Also, the locate will just uh, use a pre indexed, a pre indexation of our hard drive or storage device, which means that all of this was indexed at it, 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 it's, it's kind of a cache he builds. If you want to update the cache, just to update DB, he will update the cache and then he will locate. Let me give you an example of the importance of updating the cache. Let me create a file called in ETC called like uh, uh, potatoes.pot. Hi. If I do a locate for the file I just created, you don't, it, it is not found. But if I update my cache, then he is found. Okay? So it, it's important to update your locate cache if you had any major file system updates, or else the locate will not find the, the changes. This update occurs every day automatically around, min, uh, around midnight. But if you want to force to update to occur now, you can just do update db and it should be uh, good to go. The one is the find. The find is a very powerful tool, very, very powerful tool, too powerful for me to explain in, in this chapter. Okay? 
but it, you can use find for example with many patterns you can find for file name file size permissions uh change date many many options uh let's do a simple the simplest of them all which is let's find on the etc folder a file named the potatoes.pot that i just created and there it is so the find does not use a pre-cache which means that it might create a little bit more iops on your hard drive on other storage devices but it has many many more options it's much more powerful than the locate so if you want to do a quick locate you just use a locate with the corresponding update if you want to, to do some more in-depth and in-detail find actions you can just do the, use the find and um and you should be uh, good to go can use for file name file size exchange dates yeah, owners uh, permissions specific permissions and all of that the find allows you to do all of that powerful finds so you can find your file that's it for chapter 13 next one will be chapter 14 which is also the last chapter any questions put them down below like and subscribe it will help the channel to grow and i'll see you in the next one cheers guys